This is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm and I'm gonna go and plant some seeds from our fruit. I got some citrus seeds off that tree. Our lemon tree. I just picked another lemon. Um, the fruit was really good. Uh, it was extra juicy and I'm gonna go plant some seeds mixed with some of our star fruit seeds we have carry and sri and seeds and i'm going to add some of our delightful canistel seeds in there from the fruit that i picked premature like when it was three weeks ago it was like half the size of the other fruit that are on the that were on the tree i picked one more there were three fruits the first year it's fruited this is a little citrus I planted last winter. Um, one of our citrus from our tree. And um, it's doing fine. It's not huge, but this was a super harsh spot. It was full sun and, um, you know, it's never been given any water. But it looks totally fine. I don't give the seeds water when I plant them in the pots, the black plastic pots. I know I'm using black plastic pots. I'm working on that problem. Um, here's another one. It has a little better location in this uh, pigeon pea forest there. Then there's other little citrus planted around. <clears throat> and then the big citrus on our trees. And then we have one of our lemon trees that produces flowers in July. So we got one fruit. This is the first year of fruiting on our, our own citrus from our trees. Our seeds that we grew from our own tree. So. Um, it's kind of exciting it's exciting that they're good so I have to get up to the compost pile but I've got little citrus planted throughout I wish I could like find find them on the fly here but I know that they're there there's a tiny little key line around here somewhere maybe I could find it um, I saw it the other day but of course, I'm not going to be able to. Here it is. Right there. This little tree. That's the key line. This is a, was a super harsh area. You see, it's right next to the trail. You see the white sand, and that you could feel the compaction. It was like mowed. It was right next to this tree. That's why these trees are all dying. You know, the sand, sand is what they make sandbags out of. It's like cement, water can't go through it if it's compacted. That's the whole problem here in Florida. That's why all the water runs into the lagoon with all everyone's chemicals that they apply. <clears throat> yep. I don't think it can be stopped. People just are uninterested. That's what it is. Oh well. Here's a seed grown um, at Amoyas. And uh, that's a little star fruit. And then that looks like a jackfruit seed that I put there. There's a little seed, seed grown key lime. Citrus is one of those plants that are like the easiest thing to grow in Florida. I'm not really sure how you could mess that up, to be honest, but the growers did. Fresh bananas all winter long. So pretty here. House is coming off the market today. Thank God. I mean, where in the heck would I go? <clears throat> nope. 
And all those seeds. So this um, seeds, I start them in biodynamic compost that I make, and I've been making compost in the same area in a ring around this giant oak tree over by the barns, near the barns, and um, it has been a process. I started making thermophilic compost, and I took temperatures, and I have all the records for it because that's what they make you take, make. Or they, that's like, that's what they push. And if you don't make thermophilic compost, then you have to treat every compost you make like it's raw manure. So, uh, it's bizarre. It's bizarre to me that I have year old, uh, biodynamic horn that's been in a rain barrel in the horn and I have to treat it like raw manure. <clears throat> I'll show you my compost. It doesn't even resemble raw manure and raw manure you can mix into the soil and plant seeds in it and harvest in 30 days according to the organic people. So I don't understand why there's a law against the biodynamic association that really impedes it and uh, we do need the the horn or the, <laughs> the the anaerobic micros because they're that's how cells start so so this horn is in here and it's been in here a year and there's it's you know this is was buried in the ground six months and then uh put in here for eight months and you can clearly see the mushroom in there or yeah that's what it is it floats see But it doesn't break down. You can see all the filaments. But, um... So if I was to scrape this out of here and make a spray out of it, I would have to treat it like raw manure. So I couldn't sell anything organic for 120 days that I sprayed it with. That's just... That's my whole issue with the... the the aerobic compost and the aerobic com the thermophilic compost didn't make as good a compost as the the static pile compost so i perfected the compost i know how to make compost so this is our compost you can see it's very mineralized with sand you know the native soil it's kind of it's soil it's, it's like all there's earthworms in it and everything else. The green is just little uh, broken plants that were on top. I'll go over there and show it to you. But it's really nice stuff. I mean, it's like... So why do I have to treat that like raw manure? It's bizarre. Here's the seeds I accidentally knocked off in here. And those are the lemon seeds. And then here's some of those star fruit seeds. Where'd the others go? Must have fallen in. Um, and then here's the, the uh, delightful canistel. The seeds look good. I leave the fruit and everything on the, the seeds. I think that's important. I just dump the seeds in there and then I put some lemon seeds in there. I fill the pot up and then I put some starfruit seeds in there. 
And I'm going to plant one of these together in the same hole and see that, you know, one whole plot that I plant that starts up. That, uh, you know, that I planted that starts up. Um, I'll just bury it all in the same hole like I've done in previous videos because I found that trees that are planted all together in the same hole, little tiny trees, because I plant this within two months. I mean, it's, I put it over, over here, pick it up after I plant it, and I put it over here, I've already done one. And I don't even water it. They grow, they come up. I've done it for long enough to know that they all grow and they all come up without being watered. So this is, this is when I already planted and put over here. And I just, this is where I usually start. I had this, that's like the extent of my black plastic pots that I can deal with. I need to like upgrade to terracotta or something since I don't use that many of them. Uh, this feels like it's inside another pot, which I don't want. But that's it. You want it touching the ground. You want a hole in the pot so it can get the water. There's that fungi. It looks like that's growing in that horn. And it grows throughout the soil here when the earth gets uncovered from an area I walked in. There's some fungi that grows from that oak tree. <clears throat> this oak tree where we make the compost. So I've been making compost here, biodynamic compost for like years. We've been here six years, so I know I've been making the compost for probably five, the biodynamic compost, continuously. And I used to make a huge pile every month, a, a ring around this tree, right, right on the outside of the tree. And um, then I doubled the size of the compost pile and I made it every other month. And I used to do turn. I used to turn the piles, like ugh, it's the pain in the butt, and it created a huge mess, and compacted all the areas around it, and um, it didn't really make that good a compost. I mean, it didn't have a lot of dirt in it, naturally, like the static pile compost does. This is a daily manure. So this is like manure with straw and shavings. And I put it between the trees when they're not flowering. Because you do have to treat that like raw manure for months. You have to treat everything like raw manure. Everything gets the same thing. This is our biodynamic horn, horn area where I did it this year on the edge of this beautiful old tree in an area where I've been making compost for years. And this is a left remains of one of those giant compost piles that I used to make because I found a better way finally. And then I throw chop and drop in here and other stuff. It's a good fertile area. We store our trailer here and it's over by the barns. The donkeys and the cows are over there. And this is like, uh, was an old pile, a huge giant old pile. And this is the Bokashi compost that I dump on top. And then I, what I do now is I just take a daily thing of compost and put it where I've taken to fill up the area that I've taken from. And I just do a day, day's worth. I don't do it any higher than that. Just each one of these was one day so that they're all touching. Preferably, I would have liked to put the Bokashi compost underneath, but I threw it on afterwards. And this is like year old uh, cacao. So I just dig it out from right here. This was like 60 days, 60 to 
90 days with just one pile in a heavy rain in this area where I've been making compost for years. It, this, it does make a difference. And that's it. I mean, does that look like a raw cow manure? It looks like it's completely reduced and finished to me. But I have to treat it like raw manure, which isn't a problem because we have perennial crops, but I know if I was growing vegetables, it would be a problem. But they can grow vegetables on like not as good a compost. So tropical fruit trees, to do it successfully, I think you need to have uh, higher quality inputs. So the biodynamic compost does make a difference. And I believe in Florida, because it's so fragile, it does make a difference. We can't use uh, municipal shavings or wood chips. Because <sighs> you don't know what's in them. Because we're certified organic and certified biodynamic. So they're not allowed. We have a chipper for our tractor, but I just throw down whole logs now and whole sticks. I don't even bother breaking them up. They pretty much decompose very quickly. <laughs> Somebody threw their trash in here, though. Oh. <clears throat> I'm going to remove that lower and plant more heliconia in here and fill this up because that was just too much of a pain in the butt, that, that hedge. Heliconia and torch ginger and maybe a little path through there, hidden path. Anyway, this is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and I hope you have a good day.